I'm going to demonstrate the difference between running a basic program on a compiler and an interpreter. Um, so I've got my source code in user one of drive E. I'll start the basic interpreter first of all and run uh, the actual game in as under the basic interpreter. I'll show the speed and it's going to be a comparison between the speed running under the basic interpreter and the speed running under the compiler. So the interpreter's run, uh, start up and now it's loading the game. And so it displays, this game displays a load of buildings along the bottom of the screen and an aircraft goes across the display and you can drop bombs and you've got to clear the buildings to land the plane. And uh, when I drop a bomb, it actually goes, it, or when I'm not dropping a bomb, I should say, it has a delay loop in there so that the actual CPU time it takes when dropping a bomb, it, it makes the plane not speed up when it's, when it's not dropping a bomb. Uh, so the next pass, I will t roughly time how long it takes a plane to go across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So between seven and eight seconds, it takes a plane to go across the display on here. And if I just come down to the bottom, I can do a list. So this is the actual basic program. Now what I need to do is save this basic program as a text file. And put comma A at the end of the save command to save as a, an ASCII file. Otherwise it saves it as a, uh, a binary file. And when that's saved, I will go back to the system. And I'll just um, display both of the files so you can see the difference between the, the um, two files. So the, the usual way of saving will save a file like this, which is all kind of binary stuff. And then if I display a text file, it's just uh, the listing, the actual text listing of the actual game itself. So in user four, I've got the compiler. So I need to copy the text file into this directory. So I use pip to do that. And I have to say open brackets G1 to copy from user one area. And actually copy from that user area into the user area where I've got my compiler so I can actually do the um, compilation. So when that's come into this area, I will just do a directory and just make sure it's all there. Okay, so to compile it, I have to type um, bascom and then type the name of the game, comma name of the game, um, and then equals then a source file name and that will actually do the comp compilation but it won't actually produce a com file which you can run uh, but after we do this we have to link the library that it produces to other libraries uh, which is just one one line command again it just takes a few seconds for it to go through the compilation process it produces a couple of files it produces a .prm file and a .lib library file, well, a .rel, which is the library file. And the PRM file contains the text of the source code of BASIC, and then after each line of the BASIC code, it'll, it shows you the set of assembly instructions that it, that BASIC code compiles to, which is quite interesting, because as you look through the, the actual file, you can see how, it, how the compiler is doing stuff and how it actually runs. Uh, so I'll actually take a look at that file just after it's done a compilation. It takes a little while to do the compilation because I'm running at 4 megahertz, which is kind of the typical speed of computers of that kind of time. So it's gone through without any errors. Um, there are certain things, certain basic lines that you need to actually change, uh, but mo most of the basic actually compiles without a problem. So this is the result, and as you can see, so this is the PRM file there, and this is the library which you have to link. But if I just type PRM file, just um, just let it go through that way, and you can see that there's quite a bit of assembly. So for the print command, it does a lot of assembly stuff. 
but other commands it doesn't do so much so this is a, like a calculation and it shows you all the calls it does and, and all the assembly stuff that's it's quite interesting to go through that and take a look what it does but actually I'm gonna link this program now so I need L80 which is the linker the Microsoft linker and it is back the actual command line is very similar to the command line for compiling so do the, the same again blitz comma blitz and then you have to go for n for slash e up, i guess it's uppercase n uppercase e although i think cpm actually converts it up to uppercase anyway so it probably doesn't matter if you put lowercase and uh, that will then link the the file which was created which is this library the blitz rel which is my source code my source code uh, with the basic uh, library there and it uses this bc load as well that file so you need that file in the directory uh, and then it'll produce a com file but whenever you want to run it you need this brun.com in the same directory as where you actually run in your compiled basic program so if you ever distribute it you need your basic program.com and uh, and the brun.com and then you can actually load it up and run it so once this is uh, linked, which shouldn't take too long, uh, I'll actually start it up and and you should see instantly the difference in speed between uh, the interpreted version and uh, and this compiled version. I think all of these tools are, are Microsoft tools. I think uh, MBasics, so that's definitely Microsoft. Uh, this is, uh, the linker is Microsoft. And uh, I'm base Bascom, I'm not sure, but I think that's probably Microsoft, although it didn't, didn't, I don't think it said it was Microsoft, but when it actually ran. So it's gone through most of the linkages. It's probably just saving the com file now. Okay, so if I do a directory, and there's the blitz.com file. So when I, when I start this up, if I just type in blitz, um, it will load up the blitz.com, then it loads up the brun.com. So it takes a little while longer than normal com file loading because it has to load up both of them. Uh, and when it goes across the screen, so you can see it's a hell of a lot faster to actually run um, a compiled version. So if I try and time it across the screen, one, two, so between two and three seconds. Uh, but most of that time is actually the, the sending stuff to the display because it's using a serial port to send to the display. That's the slowest part of the process. So, and as you can see, when I press the bomb, the plane slows right down. Uh, that's because the, the most expensive part of actually running is actually sending the characters to the to the display. So I'm sending, um, so I'm sending uh, both the bomb character and a uh, location character and C code to set the location on the display, and that extra uh, overhead actually slows it down a fair amount. But if I wasn't actually drawing stuff to the to the display itself, you can do you could do a lot more calculations behind the scenes without actually slowing this game down. So you could put, probably put a lot, more, a lot more logic into this game and it wouldn't slow it down much at all. It's when you actually display stuff to the display because it's come over a serial terminal, that's what will slow it down. But if you were communicate, so I'm communicating at 19200 bits per second, if you increase that speed, then of course that would reduce the overhead of the, of the game and it would actually go a lot faster as well. But if you're doing calculation stuff, Compiled basic is incredibly faster, even for games. You can see. I mean, I could write a game in interpreted basic, and you can do a decent sort of sort of basic kind of game. But if you wanted to do a more complex game, it's definitely worthwhile writing it in uh, compiled basic.